I thought I would destroy my channel. No, I really don't want to do that. I'm just really curious recently about the security of the White House and I thought I would take you guys down that tunnel with me in case you were also curious on a technical level what kind of security the White House has. In light of recent events, it came to my mind on a basic, basic level, what are the security requirements of big government buildings, the government buildings that are the head of the Western world in America and the most important government building in the world being the White House, arguably. What utter nonsense. Before I get into the video, do be sure to subscribe, otherwise someone's gonna take your words and twist them and misconstrue them and turn everyone against you, which I really hope doesn't happen to me. So subscribe and also like the video or dislike the video. Either way, the algorithm loves it. Oh God, I'm stressed, but I do wanna do this video. Stop talking down, just get into it. Okay, I am aware there will be a temptation to get into political debate in the comments, but can we just pull that away push it to one side for a tiny minute and just look at the technical stuff about the whys and the hows of security. And I'm aware that there are a lot of theories going around about recent events. Um, let's just whoo, whoo, push them to one side. I'm hoping we can just look from an apolitical perspective at the basic security measurements of this huge building, irrespective of who is in power at any given moment. This video does not come at you with an agenda here. I'm just interested. Jeez, they get it or they don't, move on. I'll be honest, I hadn't really thought about how susceptible to attack such a major building was until I saw this scene in Independence Day as a kid. And I legit remember thinking that could never happen because I'm quite sure the White House has like an impenetrable dome that comes over it when it's under attack. Like, you know, like those big things that go over your plate at a posh restaurant for dinner. I mean, we live in a world where cars can drive themselves. Surely if any building has a big dome over it, it's gonna be the White House, right? Apparently not, that we know of. And over the years, I heard stories about bunkers and how Air Force One could just sweep up all the important people while the rest of us would probably just die in an alien attack or get set on fire or fall under the volcano that's inevitably gonna kill us all. Frankly, I hope I'm one of the few people chosen for alien experimentation. I mean, it would be an adventure, right? It crossed my mind again recently when me and my friend Paul went to the Phoenix Park to the back of the Irish president's house and we were taking pictures and then this guy that looked like about 19 with a security gun came over and told us, you can't be here, so we, we left. That seemed about the extent of the security at the Irish president's home. But I mean, it worked. And at that moment I thought, huh, I bet American buildings are way more secure than this. And then I remembered seeing inaugurations where this huge extra fence would go up around that time. And I kind of thought, well, if they need the extra fence, are things not secure enough already? And then 2020 happened, closely followed by 2021. And I started to doubt how secure those buildings are at all. And today, I want to look into it. I mean, honestly, in the last year, I'm beginning to think that some banks are more secure than government buildings, but we'll see. So according to research, the government in America spends 600 billion on home security defense. Wow. They also say we'll never know everything that they do. Ooh. I'm thinking maybe they got the aliens to cross over and work for the Secret Service or something. Okay, I actually do know this already. Reagan built secret tunnels under the White House to the government bunker, which is underneath the White House. And we do know that there is a bunker. And in 2010, there was construction done on the West Wing. And then when it was done, nothing looked really that different from the outside or the immediate inside, so people were like, hmm, it's under the building. They'd obviously upgraded the nuclear bunker under the building to go with modern times. I mean, look, think about all the advances in internet and technology that have happened over the years. They have to update that shiz from time to time, right? And a couple of presidents have used it since, the bunker. So we know about the bunker, the bunker exists, cool. I mean, I've definitely said it here before, if I could afford a bunker, I would be getting a bunker. That is the first thing I will do when I win the lotto, which I haven't done yet. I and mean, I kind of feel I deserve my money back because I mean, I never win. 
Apparently the White House also has security dogs, which is great news because dogs are very effective and 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 can be well trained, right buddy? My dog is a highly trained video dog to be on video. When I say, Chewy, we're doing video, there he goes. And I would assume that the White House security dogs are similar, but more deadly. Kill the teddy, kill him, kill him. <laughs> kill the doll. Uh, it's more like he just wants to braid her hair. So that's good news. The next thing that they have is food tasters. That is crazy. That is crazy, but actually makes a lot of sense. I know back in the day they used to do it for kings and queens that somebody would come in and it would be their job to test the food before the king or queen tested it uh, to make sure that it wasn't poisoned. And then in retrospect, they may have died, so it was quite a it was quite a dangerous job, but they would be well paid. Now, presumably, the people who are chefs and stuff are very vetted by security, but apparently, the president will bring the food taster around with them on trips and have them taste the food, and a certain amount of time will lapse until um, they can eat the food. So that's. That's interesting, right? Okay, this one seems obvious, so background checks. Everybody who enters the White House has to have a background check. However, I do believe that a couple of times this has been breached. Apparently some dude just walked up to the White House and rang the bell one time. Also, another few times people just went in and started taking pictures of the Oval Office. Yeah, that wasn't good, was it? Turned out they were innocent enough. One guy had a briefcase full of just maps and stuff. He was just a regular tourist. I'm assuming they've tightened security on that end of things since that incident happened. Ooh, the next one is snipers. And apparently they will not tell us how many snipers there are, but there are approximately 2,000. Supposedly a thousand of them are just in normal clothes and the other thousand of them are just walking around in their sniper costumes. That's quite a lot of snipers. I'd have to question how many of them are really good snipers because you've got to imagine there's a couple of lads who've slipped through the net there who are like not all that confident in their shooting prowess. There's also maybe a percentage of that 2000 who really don't want to shoot to kill. Like they just don't want blood on their hands. I mean, I'm just assuming that people do slip through the net, right? It's very possible. I mean, the rumor goes that Secret Service people are prepared to die for the president, but you've got to think there's probably one or two who were just in it for the money. I mean, it's got to be well paid, right? Being the Secret Service. Quite the honor. But are they really prepared to die for the president? I'm going to bet there's one or two that aren't. And I only took this job to become friends with all of you. Next up, secret lasers and infrared sensors. Ooh. Okay, so infrared sensors makes absolute sense, doesn't it? Like a lot of homes in America have infrared sensors. That's not a huge deal, especially in a place like the White House. If somebody's sneaking up the lawn, there's gonna be a thing that can detect their body heat and stuff to say, there's a person on the lawn. Secret lasers, however, that's kind of interesting, right? What do the secret lasers do? Arm the laser. Okay, so the secret lasers supposedly shoot things out of the sky and like can shoot things from a great distance. So if we have them, why the snipers? Apparently, there's a lot of things that lasers can do. So I think that's the most curious one on this list so far, lasers. Next up we have drones, okay, drones. I know other governments use drones. I've seen, oh, I can't remember what president, but there's one president who gets like followed around by drones all the time. Drones are the flying cameras, cameras what do fly. They can literally pick a specific person and just tail them without anybody even operating the drone. Like presumably from a good distance, because if it was here, it would annoy anyone, right? But the drones also keep an eye on the White House itself from way up in the sky, and, and presumably they notify the uh, snipers and the lasers for to shoot people what do get too close. And on that related note, we have anti-aircraft missiles. Missiles is just a scary word, isn't it? It just seems like overkill. But I guess if somebody was going after the White House, fair enough, you get killed by a missile. And also, subsequently, whoever else is around you would get killed by said missile. Around the White House, it's a no-fly zone. You can't fly over the White House. So presumably, if anything penetrates... Oh, I'm very mature. If anything penetrates that airspace, um, it will basically get shot down by a missile. 
God, wouldn't it be terrible if somebody's air sat nav was just off and they just, like a Ryanair flight got like shot down by a missile. Next up, they have the impossible to climb bomb proof fence. Well, that sounds like a challenge, doesn't it? There's odes of Titanic to that claim, right? The impossible to climb fence, the impossible to sink ship. It probably is hard to climb. There are generally anti-climbing walls around where I live in Dublin and they're just really slippy and then they have like glass on top. So I think it's similar to that. I know there's a lot of pointy things at the top of the fence around the White House. I also know that they moved back the distance that civilians can go to the White House um, in recent years. The fact that the fence is bomb proof is good too, I suppose. But nobody's trying to, oh, I guess maybe people would try and explode the fence to get inside. Yeah, no, that, that sounds reasonable. Next up, they have bulletproof glass, which I would have assumed was the case for all government buildings, but as we learned recently, no. I mean, if any building's gonna have bulletproof glass, it's gotta be the White House, right? That's just a logical one, right? It has to have bulletproof glass. That does not surprise me as much as some of the others. Bulletproof glass is basic. And finally, we have Lincoln's ghost. What? So apparently the ghost of Abraham Lincoln roams the halls of the White House, protecting the people inside. But really, how much damage can a ghost do? They can't pick up anything or touch anything. I guess, I mean, I've seen Poltergeist. That did a good bit of damage. So yeah, in theory, Lincoln's ghost. But what if the person trying to get into the building brought an exorcist? Maybe that would be too far planning ahead, but you never know. Anyway, today I learned a few things. I hope you did too. Over to Chewy for a couple of shout outs. Today's first shout out goes to Sasha's daddy, Curtis Watkins. This is a picture of Sasha on her sixth birthday only a few days ago. He says she's been a good friend and loves him unconditionally and he'll never be able to show his love and appreciation to her. Thank you, Cordis, and thank you, Sasha. Happy sixth birthday. We're the same age. Jason Moyer wants to shout out all the teachers who are returning back to work after the holiday break. Regardless of what or where you teach, all of us support you and your efforts. That's a really good point, Jason. It's got to be hard out there right now. Thanks, guys. And that's it for today's video. I hope you found it kind of interesting. I did. I was just curious. Feel free to engage with one another in the comments in a respectful way. I'll see you on the other side. Bye. God, wouldn't it be terrible if like some random rabbit? Okay, no, nothing. I mean, I mean, in, I mean, honestly, in the last year, apparently the white, apparently this, apparently the white house. The dog has moved. The motto is it could be me. Well, it's never me. But why would a rabbit be flying an airplane?